Hi, my name is uh, Dave Whiteley. I'm Technical Director of Envisage UK Limited, and I'd like to take this uh, opportunity to run through Autodesk Simulation 360 with you. So what we're going to do here is, uh, first of all, we're going to go through uh, what's available to us when we install uh, Autodesk uh, Simulation 360. Um, it's a cloud-based product, so uh, the first thing we have to do is have us, uh, an Autodesk login and uh, once we've downloaded and installed our Simulation 360 products, we get the following. We get the Autodesk Simulation Mechanical, we get Autodesk Simulation CFD, uh, we get Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis, and we get Fusion. Now, this is Fusion uh, 2013 R1, which enables us to run with 2014 products. We also get available to us a uh, Simulation Job Manager, and this Job Manager will show us the active and the complete jobs that we've sent up to the cloud. Uh, each job will give us a status. So for instance, this particular CFD job, it gives me the number of cloud credits I used, uh, the uh, upload and download and the solve, um, in this case is finished, but this will actually give us the uh, status, uh, the scheduled time and, and all the information you require for uh, the uh, running this analysis on the cloud. We also have an area for the active uh, simulations, which at the moment I haven't got any running. Okay, we'll minimize this and we'll run up in the uh, Fusion software. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run uh, a simulation which involves a semiconductor and a heat sink. So we're gonna perform a fluid flow and thermal analysis to calculate the velocity of airflow over the assembly, as well as the steady state temperature profile for the heat sink and the semiconductor. We'll then set up a linear static stress analysis to simulate the effects of these high operating temperatures on the model. So I'm going to actually use two of the products in the Sim360 range. So we're going to open up uh, the heatsink in uh, the Fusion uh, 2013 product. Now, Fusion is a useful tool uh, that's supplied with uh, the, the Sim360 software. This enables you to read in uh, third-party CAD models. You don't have to have a CAD product on your machine, but this enables you to read in uh, third-party CAD models into uh, Fusion and then push these across to the Simulation360 products. So we'll just open up the heatsink. So it doesn't really matter what this came from. It could have come from uh, ProEngineer, Katia, Unigraphics, whatever, Stepfile, Inventor, or 3D AutoCAD. Um, the idea is that uh, the uh, Sim360, sorry, the uh, Fusion software enables us to push this through to the, the Sim360 products, but also it gives us the ability to do things like a simplify, so you can turn off uh, the external fillets and chamfers on a model when you're doing a, a, an FEA simulation, for example, or you can you can uh, calculate internal fluid volumes if you're doing a CFD analysis, as an example. So let's push this through to the Sim360 product and launch it. So this runs up the simulation CFD360, one of the products that we downloaded as part of our Sim360 range. And we've got our model. Uh, I'll turn off the air volume so we can see what we got inside. And in here we're going to uh, we're going to um, set up the materials. At the moment, you'll notice everything is unassigned. Uh, so let's just select the heat sink and the semiconductor, and we'll edit these and we'll change these to uh, solid and aluminium uh, six oh six one. There we go. So that applies aluminium alloy to these two components. Let's show all now and uh, take the air volume. As you can see, it's important to note the number of volumes selected down here. Um, if you're not too careful, sometimes you can be selecting more than you require. Keep an eye on this number down here. So if we edit this and change this to a fluid, this is to be air. Okay, we've got no unassigned volumes now. Everything has assigned a material, so nothing's unassigned down here. Okay, let's apply uh, some loads and constraints. So we need to move across to boundary conditions. And in boundary conditions, we're going to add uh, a total heat generate, de generation of our uh, um, uh, semiconductor. So we'll just select the volume selection button at the top here, select the semiconductor, 
and we'll edit this and we'll give this a total heat generation of uh, 15 watts. And from this side, changing it back to surface, so we're only selecting the surfaces of the air volume. This is going to be an outlet, so we're going to make this a pressure of zero. And on the other side, we'll add a volume flow rate, sorry, a linear velocity. And this velocity is going to be set to 100 millimeters per second. We could put a volume flow rate in if we knew that instead. And on top of that, we're also going to give this a temperature. And we'll make this 30 degrees C. You notice the two bands on here. If I, if I just leave my mouse on the surface for just a second, it will show a, a pricey of what's actually applied to this. And you can see we've got our normal velocity of 100 millimeters a second and our temperature of 30 degrees Celsius. We move this around and hover over this, we've got a pressure of zero. So we've got ourselves a fluid flow through our semiconductor. Okay, we need to go to um, the solve. And you'll notice with solve, the solver computer is the cloud. Some of the SIM360 products, you've actually got the ability of selecting either the cloud or your desktop machine. You have that flexibility. In this particular SIM360 uh, setup I've got here, I can only solve to the cloud. Let's go to physics and put on heat transfer because that's what we actually want to calculate as well. And we'll go ahead and solve this. So we're going to do 100 iterations uh, to the cloud. We just click on solve. Once the uh, airflow analysis past the heat sink has uh, solved on the cloud and downloaded to our desktop machine, um, we can then uh, start the CFD software and uh, view the results. And of course, this could be uh, after we've been using our, uh, our desktop machine for other things because, of course, the solve has been done on the cloud. So it's, uh, it's um, given up uh, time and space for us to work on uh, other things on our desktop machine while the solve is going on. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the results on the airflow analysis and we'll just add a plane uh, across the component. Let's just change its orientation and uh, we'll have a look at the, uh, the velocity across the heat sink and the, uh, let's have a look at the uh, temperature as well. As you can see, the uh, heat given off by the semiconductor, uh, the airflow across the heat sink and of course this is causing a, a heat uh, gradient to be built up across the design which we can then go ahead and analyze in the FEA software. While that's happening let's go back to our fusion and we're now going to uh, take this model and send this through to the simulation mechanical. This will run up the, sim th the simulation mechanical 360 product Okay, we're going to uh, create this as a static linear stress analysis. And bring the model in to the analysis package. Okay, we don't want to simulate the air so we can suppress that. What we're interested in at the moment is the heat sink and the uh, semiconductor. Okay, let's go ahead and mesh this. So we generate a mesh. I won't bother about changing the size at the moment, but we could do that later if we wished. That'll create the mesh, and then of course we need to add some constraints to this. You notice I've allowed it to bring the material across from the, uh, from the CAD model. We could override that should we wish. Okay, let's go to set up here and add some pin constraints to the uh, mounting holes on the heat sink. and we'll constrain this radially and tangentially. Okay, let's go to the element definitions of the materials. We need to give them the uh, stress-free temperature, which in this case we're gonna put in at uh, 25 degrees C. And then we need to go to the parameters for this analysis. And because we're interested in bringing the uh, thermal gradient across from the CFD software, we need to put thermal on. 
And in the thermal tab, we need to tell it that we actually want to read our temperature gradients from the simulation CFD file, which by this time should have come back from the cloud. So if we browse to that, bring the uh, CFD um, thermal gradient across from the CFD output. OK on that, we can then go ahead and run the simulation. So let's go ahead and run that from the analysis tab, run the simulation. This then uploads the files to the cloud. The uh, analysis is shown as complete and the results are then transferred across to my simulation software the next time I open up the uh, file in this software. So let's have a look at this. Um, we'll take a look at the uh, von Mises stress analysis, uh, the stress concentrations throughout the uh, design, um, perhaps the displacement. Um, we can also, in uh, the software, have a look at the applied loads. If I go to the other results here in the applied loads, and we can actually have a look at temperature. This is the temperature gradient that's coming across from the output of the CFD analysis that we did initially. We go to results inquire, we can also check the results by part. So in here we can actually inquire on the minimum and maximum results per part. So for instance, if I go to the results for von Mises as an example, and then inquire for the results by part, I can inquire on the maximum and minimum results per part, which is new in the software. So that's a quick analysis of a heat sink semiconductor done in both the uh, CFD software to get the uh, volume flow and then the thermal gradient across the heat sink and then taking those temperatures across to uh, the FEA software to do a linear static analysis. The mechanical software is, um, has got the ability to do non-linear analysis as well, mechanical event simulation, drop tests, all that sort of thing. Uh, all as part of the Sim360 product. Uh, if you need to contact me for any reason, support, training, um, sales of the software, then my details are on the screen. And uh, if you wish to view my other videos, then you need to be looking at the YouTube channel, which is Envisage UK LTD. Thank you very much for your time.